If you ever suspected that your name was added to the terror watch list and you wanted to know why or how you ended up on it, today you might be able to get an answer. The Intercept obtained a copy of perhaps the most revealing document to date about the practice. And here it is, a copy of the rule book the government uses that spells out when to add a name onto the list and what evidence is necessary. This is what the Bush and the Obama administration have been working so hard to keep out of the hands of the general public. It is 166 pages of unclassified information that Attorney General Eric Holder and others have invoked the state secrets privilege to protect. Intercept reporters Jeremy Scahill and Ryan Devereaux discovered that neither concrete evidence nor irrefutable facts are necessary to place a person's name on the list. In fact, all it takes is a single White House official to place an entire category of people on the list. So what exactly raises a red flag? Well, destruction of government property, damaging computers used by financial institutions, posting things on social media, knowing or being related to someone that is on the list already, fitting a certain profile, all of those things can blacklist you. Part of the rule book reads, quote, in determining whether a reasonable suspicion exists, due weight should be given to the specific reasonable inferences that a nominator is entitled to draw from the facts in light of his or her experience and not on unfounded suspicions or hunches. Although irrefutable evidence or concrete facts are not necessary, to be reasonable, suspicion should be as clear and as fully developed as circumstances permit. We are also learning more about what information the government collects about those on the list. Now that includes travel itineraries, gun licenses, health insurance information, medication prescriptions, and any card that you carry in your wallet that has an electronic strip on the back. So that could be gift cards or discount cards, it could be a grocery card, it could even be a library card. They also collect academic transcripts, parking tickets, email addresses, and much more. And a number of agencies like the USAID contribute to the collection of this information. Now, the number of people that have been added onto this list has ballooned, with nearly 1.5 million names submitted to the watch list over the past five years, and 99% of those names being approved to be added. Now, take a look at these numbers. These numbers are a visual manifestation of what government critics call a wildly loose classification process. Also remaining on the watch list, people who have already been acquitted of terrorism-related charges. Because while U.S. courts require evidence beyond a reasonable doubt, watch listing only requires reasonable suspicion. And the deceased? They are either added or kept on the list to prevent potential terrorists from attempting to steal their identities. Now, the National Counterterrorism Center and the Terrorist Screening Center declined to comment to The Intercept. RT itself has reached out to the Department of Justice, the FBI, and the TSA. We are still waiting to hear back from them. Reporting in Washington, Megan Lopez, RT.